Good morning. Cheers. Happy Friday. It's the end of the week for all you folks still working. Some of us retired folks, uh, we get the days of the midweek mixed up quite a bit. Anyway, today I am going on another nice little motorcycle ride. I'm going to be leaving St. John's, Newfoundland and heading out to Fox Cove out in Bjorn for the weekend to spend with my parents. And I will show you on the map exactly where this is. Well, maybe not exactly because I don't want too much company. I, uh, it's bad enough with just my parents. <laughs> Sorry, mom and dad, I'm only joking. Anyway, here's a map of where I'm going, just to give you a visual. And by map, I mean casting my Google Maps onto my TV screen. So here's the map of Newfoundland, and this is uh, just to give you an idea where I'm located. Obviously, I'm the spot that says home, and my parents are at Fox Cove Mort here. But uh, on this route, there is a little spot that I'm gonna stop. It's usually when I'm riding, I'll go on past, I'll keep going and going and going. I never really, well, I rarely stop at Whitburn, but most times I end up stopping up here at Doobies and uh, going into Robbins. But today there's a little spot around right here somewhere that uh, it's a lookout and that's where I'm gonna stop today, mainly because my parents stopped there. So I'm just gonna go in and see what all the fuss is about. And if you zoom your map in far enough or close enough, you can actually see the name of the place. It's called the Sandy River Interpretive Viewpoint. You've probably seen the sign on the highway that says erratic driving. Have a stop, have a look. So that's my plan. I'm gonna, it's only about two hours or so to get there, a little over two hours. So I'm gonna ride on past my robins and and probably boil up a coffee right there at one of those picnic tables because there's some seating arrangements there. Anyway, I'll see you on the bike. Well, as you can see, I made it to my motorcycle, safe and sound. Before I got on my motorcycle, I actually went out and had breakfast with a couple of veteran buddies of mine. I haven't seen either of them since probably 2001 or 2002, I think. 2002, I think it was the last time I seen them, so that's why. 12 years? No, I uh, can't do enough. Anyway, it's been a long time and it was very emotional for me because these were the guys that I joined with and served with until I remustered to a different trade. And, uh, and meeting them this morning for breakfast, just that big hug, it was emotional. And I felt at home, if that makes sense. I felt really at home when I was uh, getting my hugs this morning. So it was an emotional morning for me. But anyway, right now I'm just outside of St. John's, just past Patty's Pond somewhere, and uh, making my way to Bjorn, to Fox Golf, to visit my parents for a few nights, such as, I told you all this before, I know. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the ride, because I'm going to show you some of the sights on the way down. I'm not going to be flying my drone, I'm going to be getting off my bike and exploring communities. My goal today is just to get to my parents' house. But I will take a few clips on the way just uh, just for the heck of it. And who knows, maybe it'll turn out to be something that's watchable by the time I'm finished. So uh, sit back like I'm doing and enjoy the ride. Well, what a difference in uh, weather and temperature from St. John's. It was about 27 degrees when I left St. John's and no wind. And now it's nothing but fog and a gale of wind. <laughs> I feel like it's trying to rip my head off. <laughs> I hate side winds. It's bad enough wind facing you and coming from behind, but uh, side winds, oh man, they, uh, they can be uh, startling, that's for sure, when they catch you off guard. Especially like in places like this where you're leaning to the right to take a right turn, and then all of a sudden the wind blows you further to the right. <laughs> Put it this way, I'm white knuckled and I'm hanging on to the grips pretty tight right now just anticipating every little gust. 
other than that, there's not much to show you. Chance Cove. If you ever get a chance, <laughs> no pun intended, you should go out that way. That uh, walking trail they have out there, oh, it's beautiful. It's got that nice beach with uh, that big infamous rock in the middle of it where you can climb down to it. There's a path going down to the beach and it's uh, you need to use a rope actually to uh, make your way down to hold on to so you don't fall. So that's my little tidbit of information. And as soon as that wind stops, look at that shit. As soon as that wind stops, I will rake, take my hand off my right, <laughs> off my right handlebar, and turn off the camera. But it's not safe yet, so you're gonna listen to me ramble until it is safe to do so. You get blocked up here now with these trees. There we go. See you in a bit. few bikes coming. What a difference when you go down the hill a little and get below the fog. It's still not much warmer though. It was 27 degrees in St. John's and it's 11 degrees right now. And I'm dressed for 27 degree weather so... Uh, <laughs> Soon be time to put a hoodie in. Jack's Pond Park. I think it's an RV park, but I know a few people that go there quite often. I wonder, do they have tent sites there as well? A lot of RV parks do. I might look into that. I'll call my cousin and ask her because she's there every summer quite a bit. Deja vu. It was just a few days ago I was uh, that way to go to uh, Bonavista. Here we go, the 210 run, the heritage run. Marystown 143, Bjorn 153, Grand Brink 195, Fox Cove 166. <laughs> I feel like they keep changing the name of this highway. Right now it says Don Jameson Highway. I thought it was the Caitlin Osmond Way. And I just call it a 210 run. It'll always be 210 for me. Anyway, this is Goobies, the community. Goobies South, Goobies North. I was going to stop back there and uh, put on my hoodie, but uh, I'm going to be stopping on the other side of uh, Swift Current, I think. And I'll put one on there if I need it because the temperature did go up two degrees since I turned this way. It's crazy. 27 in town, went down to 11 at one point or 10, and now we're all the way back up to 14. Yeehaw. That's it. I got the heated grips and the heated seat on as well. Warm me up. All right, we're about to enter Swift Current. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna shut up, put on some background music, and let you enjoy the ride through Swift Current. And I will mute out all this wind noise as well. So sit back, Swift Current, here we go.
side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are finally right the future is bright There to the right that takes you to Piper's Hole. There's a nice bridge out there. It was built in the for in the 1940s, I believe. See Piper's Hole, the river. I don't know if you can see it. Can't twist my head too far without killing myself, so. <laughs> go in again now and try it. God, this is pretty loose dirt. Anyway, this is where my parents come and stop all the time, so I figure I might as well too. Worse than riding on a beach. <laughs> so I'm going to get off here and make a coffee and uh, have a pee because I need to pee. It's been a long couple hours. I've never been in here before. I drove by, by this many, many times but never stopped. It's not much to it. It's just a uh, couple picnic tables, garbage can. And up here, there's a lookout, which I'll take you to in a minute. I'm going to get my coffee ready first, and then I'll go up there. Sorry about the wind noise. I don't have my other uh, microphone connected, so I'll do my best to make it sound better later. Yeah, this is probably quicker than uh, going into Robbins because there's usually a long lineup and it takes me about 10 minutes to get through the lineup and then however long it takes to uh, drink the coffee 
But here, it'll take me about five minutes to get my coffee from start to finish. And I can sip on it and walk around and enjoy myself instead of being stuck standing outside a gas station. <laughs> now, which one? One of these is tap water and one is, can't tell. Oh well, I'll do half and half. Now it's silliness. I don't need a lot, just enough to get a bit of, uh, just to get a fix. Just because I'm not on an outing somewhere doesn't mean I don't have to do the traditional taste test. Ah, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. I could feel the heat from it. Plus my lips are a little bit windburned and sunburned, so they're extra sensitive. I got sensitive lips. That was hot. Good flavor though but too hot for my lips. Anyway, let's walk around a bit. Yeah, so this is my parents' new stop. Whenever they go to St. John's from Bjorn, they, uh, they stop in here on the way in and on the way back instead of stopping at, at Gooby somewhere. Looks like the trail has seen better days. I should have brought my stove up here and made my coffee. Look at this. Got a nice little bench. Two benches. And a nice set of uh, binos to look through. Let's look at this. Fortune Head Ecological Reserve. Trapped in town. Some information about the Heritage Run. And right there is where I am. You are here. Sandy Harbor River. Look out. That's what this is. And if you look out through that telescope, that's all you'll see is all these boulders. And uh, they've been around quite a while, over 10,000 years, the glaciers. Yeah, is there anything on the last side? Yes, there is. Vagabond de Bois. This is the French side, I take it. <laughs> I can speak French. Partridge berries. It's pretty much the same information, just in different language. 
I think I will try my drone. There's a lot of wind though. So I'll see. Might as well, right? If it gets too windy, I'll just bring it back. Or I could just through these guys. Can you see through them? <laughs> Not really. Kind of hard, isn't it, with the... Uh... Alright. I'll put my own eyes there. Well, those drone clips probably weren't the most exciting drone clips you've ever seen, but uh, the significance behind them is probably a little bit better than what you've seen. As I mentioned, a lot of those rocks out there that you're looking at are 10,000 years old. They've been here since the uh, glaciers all moved, made their way through this area. So that's why it's kind of a uh, historic place, especially ecologically <laughs> I think that's the word I'm looking for or is it might not be the right word I'm looking for maybe I don't know what I'm looking for but either way I hope you enjoyed the drone clips I'm gonna finish this coffee and get back on the bike now that it's at drinking temperature we're not that far now only an hour and a half from home so I got about two and a half hours in Goes a sucker truck, one of those sewer trucks. It would suck to crash into one of those. What a shitty way to go. Alright, time to get on. Only 154 kilometers to go. Now, see if I can get through this gravel without wiping out. <laughs> I would not want to be driving too far around this. Last stretch.
right, that way to the left is uh, Petty Fort and Southeast Bite. Petty Fort is a really nice ride to uh, take. Yeah, it's a little out of the way, but the views and the scenery and all the nice little twisties in the road going out there makes it worth the ride. Plus, once you get out there, it's uh, it's a beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's the only way to say it. That's the only way to put it. I definitely plan on going back there again with my drone. I was there a couple years ago and didn't really... I just took some pictures with my phone, a couple of videos with my phone, but I never had my drone at the time. So, it's time to go back with my drone, I think. And right here on the right is... Well, a little further on the right, I'm not sure what that is. But this is what they call Midway. Which means we're halfway down through the Bjorn Peninsula. There's a trail system there that takes you all the way across to Point Rosie and leads you back into Garnish if you wanted to. I don't think I'll try it on this, but maybe on my quad sometime I'll do it. So up here, this rock formation, I grew up calling it the Sandwich as you're sandwiched between the two uh, cliffs. I remember going back and forth to St. John's as a kid with my dad, and, uh, and that's what we always call a sandwich. And for some reason, especially as a kid, you got right excited when you approached it, because I don't know what it is or what it was about it, but it was, uh, I don't know, it just, it just made you excited. As a kid, something to look forward to, like, there's a sandwich, there's a sandwich. And I think other people got different names for it. I remember seeing a friend recently share pictures where she was actually uh, riding the wheelchair through it. So if I'm not mistaken, Rick Hansen might have came down this way at one point. I could be wrong about that. If I'm right, let me know. If I'm wrong, let me know as well, please. But I vaguely recall something about it. Not much out that way, except Barron's, eh? Yeah, I'd say you'd be hard pressed to find a spot out there to put up a hammock. I think the only options if you were going to hike across there for accommodations would be either a tent or maybe just a, a bivy bag, great laying on the ground. Actually, a bivy bag with an air mattress. That's all you need. 35 seconds to go. Just down there where you see the construction happening, there's a river, Red Harbor River. And on the left of it, there's a place we used to go as kids. And we jump off the cliffs into the river. What a fun time that was. It was a long time ago. I was probably late teens, maybe even early 20s when I did that. So I remember driving down at one point. I'd like to do it again. Just leap off the cliff. Takes a few seconds before you hit the water, but it's uh, it was a good time. Memories. I don't have a lot of memories that I remember anyway. So for a heads up for anybody coming this way, especially in another couple of weeks for the uh, Bull Boy ride, you know that there's a little bit of construction happening. That's it. Nice to see them put money into it. It's an inconvenience, I know, but Gotta maintain our infrastructure, right? And this right here is Marystown. We're about half an hour from my parents' place. Look out right there if you want to stop and enjoy the view. Mort here Bay. Way over that way on the other side is Bow Boy. That's where you'll be in a few weeks. And then on the other side of that is my parents' house.
are getting closer. I think I hit Marystown rush hour. Four o'clock. Yay, perfect. Next time I gotta leave an hour earlier <laughs> to avoid. Right there on the right is my favorite Chinese food restaurant, Wang's Palace. Can't beat it. That or it's just nostalgia, but. <laughs> Well, I'm convinced it's the best Chinese food. First time I ever got drunk was over there. I was 14, I think it was. We went across, we had a six pack between two of us, and we drank it and went to the mall up that way. Good times. <laughs> yes, we stared at young. I love you across the north from up here. Spent a lot of time in Crescent North. Once again, passing through Crescent North. I would say once they put that bridge back in, the Canning Bridge, this traffic will decrease quite a bit over this way because I think a lot of the people are using this as their detour. At this way, where that escape is going is uh, Greenwood Crescent or Greenwood Drive, I think. I used to uh, live there once. The first apartment I ever owned or rented was out there, me and Dave Batchelor. I didn't stay there very long because <laughs> I was broke, house broke, couldn't afford to live there really. So that's it, but it was a good learning experience. Welcome to the town of Buren. Although this area here is actually considered salt pond. Right there is the hospital that my daughter was born in many years ago when I was in high school which is right next over here we used to climb to the top of that during lunch hour it was kind of sketchy getting back down it was, wasn't too bad getting up and, but climbing back down was a bit rough that's my uh, old school there I graduated from Father Bernie Memorial High I went to college there did business administration back in the early 90s This area right here is called Bjorn Bay Arm. And across the way over there is Lewins Cove. For those not familiar with this area. And this area is Salmon Ear. A little memorial there for a boat that sank years ago called the, the Minus Swim or Mina Swim. I think that's what it's called. It's got a list of all the names of those that passed and uh, when it when then sank. Yorn is straight ahead. Ox Cove moored here is to the left, which is where I'm hit. 
I hope that white SUV keeps going. Good. God, these roads are bad. <laughs> Old church for sale if anybody wants to buy it. And ladies and gentlemen, right here, present Green Hill. Fox go aboard here. It was never like that all the time. Kind of a weird spot for a motorcycle to be. Spent a lot of time swimming out in this pond out here. We used to have this big diving board built up, a big platform for diving off. But the town council ripped it down. And uh, we were a bunch of sad preteens and teenagers. It was a perfect spot because the water was so deep there off those rocks. Let's say hi to Mike. Hey, Mike. <laughs> and just around this corner is lovely Mortier. Look at that. Fog looks so nice off in the distance on the horizon there. I wonder is it coming in? Up there is Dog's Head. When we get closer, I don't know if you'll get an angle of it, but it's uh, shaped like a dog's head. <laughs> That's why it's called that. This is Jericho Pond. See Dog's Head up there? I used to hike up there a lot. And this pond we would spend pretty much from the end of May until probably late September swimming in that. Used to do a lot of fishing in it. Too. I don't think there's much fish in it anymore. Nothing but eels, I'd say. It's man, there were some eels in that when I used to swim. I'd be swimming in the evening, have the mask and snorkel on, and late in the evening, the sun rays are shining down through the water, and you can see all the eels just snaking their way up towards the surface. It's very creepy. And this right here is Fox Cove. Beautiful Fox Cove, home sweet home. Dimmer store here. My good buddy Sean Welsh used to live in there. We'll do the tour before I pull in my mom's driveway. Fox Cove Beach. I spent a lot of time as well swimming out in the harbor there. Mask and snorkel, swimming trunks, no, no scuba gear. <laughs> and there's my parents' house up there. This was my grandmother's house before she passed away. I lived there for a while. We used to live in that brown house there, or red, or whatever color it is at one point. Now, nah, let's see what this road is like.
What I wouldn't give to move back to Fox Cove. It's like I'm craving it. I'm. I don't know what how do you explain the feeling I got. It's a bit more than nostalgia. I just simply want to be back here. Look at this. This is why. <laughs> the peace, the quiet, the tranquility. So much freedom. Go for a ride on the quad, go up to the pond for a swim. And home sweet home, my parents' house. Made it. And the gaslight is on. Looks like a kid explosion. <laughs> well, I'm here. I made it. So I hope you enjoyed the ride down. I know it wasn't spectacular or anything. You got some drone clips out of it. And before you go, hang around because I'm going to give you some drone clips of Fox Cove, of my community. You can get a sense of it there. Look. Ocean and cliffs. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.